A very good afternoon to all of you. My name is Evelyn. I'm a member of the Kiwanis Club of uh, Central, and I'm also your MC for this afternoon's talk. Well, I'm very pleased to see all of you here, being a Sunday, which is supposed to be a family time, a quality time, and yet you are all here, right? So give yourself a warm applause for making this day a productive one. Thank you. Okay, so let me start the meeting proper. YB Professor Dr. Ramasamy, Deputy Chief Minister 2 of the Penang State Government, Datin Sri, Dato Sri Wong Siu Hai, Charter President of KCBC, Datin Sri Dae Bing Swan, Wife of Charter President KCBC, Ms. Ng Lan King, President of KCBC, Guest Speakers, Dato Dr. Lai and Datin Indrani, Members of the Penang Institute, uh, fellow Kiwanians, participants and guests, ladies and gentlemen. Well, welcome to our Kiwanis Club of Penang uh, Central Mental Health Series. And uh, this is uh, so far due to, due to the COVID, due to the COVID, uh, we always have it virtual. So right now, today, we are having it uh, uh, physical. And today's series is in collaboration with Penang Care and Penang Institute. On behalf of KCPC, I would like to thank Morana uh, Penang Institute for providing us this venue. Because normally our venue is held at the Tech Dom, Komta. But because of the conflict of dates, we have to change to other venue. So again, Morana, thank you so much for your great support for providing us this source. Okay. So I believe some of you may not understand what Kiwanis is all about. Right? So to give you a an insight, a brief insight of what Kiwan is about, I'd like to invite Dr. Sri Wong Siu Hai, Charter President of Kiwanis Club, to give a brief insight of what it's all about. Uh, YB Professor Dr. Ramasamy, uh, Deputy Chief Minister 2 of Penang State Government, uh, Madam uh, Ng Lan Keng, our Kiwanis President, our distinguished uh, speakers, um, Dato Dr. Lai Fung Hua and Datin Indrani, um, guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking your precious time on Sunday to come here. And I believe that this is the topic. Coping with anxiety is a topic that you all are probably interested in. That's why you show up. Um, before I start off, um, I would like to give a quick briefing about what Kiwanis is all about. Kiwanis Club of Penang Central was formed in October uh, 2017. I was the Charter President. Charter President means the first President. Um, and during that time, uh, we were trying to figure out what should we do. So the Kiwanis Club basically focused on the underprivileged children and also the community. Either it is one child at a time, group of children, or the whole community. So we have three key um, feature or signature programs. One is um, education for all, that we focus on the specifically for the underprivileged children. Uh, we have run a few programs like jazz, like uh, uh, integrity and managing of money, and so on. We also have the Young Enterprise Program, which is uh, to teach Form 4 students how to run a company, how to start the company and run the company. So at the end of the nine months, uh, they uh, close their accounts and they compute and see whether they actually uh, is profitable or not. And last but not least, we also think that the uh, mental health uh, is important because when I was working in the factory, we, I always think of the mental health of the workers. But then at that time, you know, not, not knowing much about mental health, we don't know how to measure and how do we find out what is the mental health of the workers. So when I came out, when I retired, I thought it is a topic that we, maybe we should pursue because when you read in the papers, there's a lot of mental health issues among our youth, among university students, among adults and the working uh, people. So uh, that's why we uh, wanted to focus on that. On top of that, we have two... Uh, clubs that we formed in school, one with Chongling and one with MBS. Okay. Now, when we started the mental health series, uh, we invited uh, our YB Professor Ramasami to uh, 
helped us launch the uh, mental health series. That was way back, I think, like 2018, I think we, uh, seven, uh, 17, when we run our first program. And uh, since then, we have been holding this uh, monthly series uh, to share many different types of topics uh, related to mental health. And we have been collaborating with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dato. Dr. Lai Indra, Dato Indrani. Uh, now we also we also collaborated with uh, the home, with the Penang Care, and uh, whoever uh, we can collaborate with. You know, and I know that many other organizations also run some of these programs. But where we can collaborate, we we collaborated with them. Especially during the COVID, we run many of the programs online. So today, I would like to specifically thank uh, YB. Professor Dr. Ramasamy for being present here today, as well as all of you who, uh, who have taken time off uh, for your precious time to come here on a Sunday, as well as Penang Institute, uh, and who else? Uh, Penang Care and Penang uh, and the Home, I know, who are present here today. So thank you very much, and have uh, I hope you have a fruitful day. Thank you. Thank you, Dato Sri Hong Zuhai. Right. Uh, we are pleased and honoured to have the presence of YP Professor Dr. Ramasamy, Deputy Chief Minister Two, with us today. And as you heard just now, uh, what Dr. Sri has said, YP Professor Dr. Ramasamy was with us when the mental health series was first launched, and he was the one to help us get the endorsement from the State Education Department for our mental health. Uh, series program. So without further ado, I'd like to invite YB Professor Dr. Ramasamy to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, Datu Sri uh, Wong Siu Hai, Charter President, Kiwanis Club of Penang Central, actually the man who dragged me into Kiwanis <laughs> yeah, on a fateful day in 2017. The speakers, uh, Dato, Dr. Lai Fong Hua and Dato Indrani Liu. Indrani has been working with us on a variety of uh, projects, especially with the children. Thank you, Indrani. And President of uh, Kiwanis Penang Central, Ms. Ng Lan Keng, and the Organizing Committee, fellow uh, Kiwanians, participants and guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me. I think. Uh, for about two or three years, I think we were doing all these online uh, discussions and uh, maybe seminars. So I was very glad uh, that I was dragged in to Kiwanis in 2017. And I realized it's a worthy program. Uh, it's a noble program to support. You know? and, uh, and I appreciate uh, Dr. Sri Wong. Uh, to be the person responsible for this, so I think um, I think mental health is a, is a very serious issue, and I was just talking to uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Lai and Indrani, just chit chatting with them on this uh, mental health issue. It's a, it's a, actually a, it's a it's a it's a it's a big issue among children, and perhaps more so among the B forty category. But the irony, irony is that we have so much findings of research and development on this. And uh, with this kind of uh, progress, I think the society is able to help these children. But unfortunately, uh, society is not able to do. And I think uh, the, perhaps the privileged, those who can afford, those who have the time, the parents, can actually uh, provide that kind of intervention. And uh, I, I remember those days when I was uh, schooling in 60s and 70s, nobody talks about mental health those days. It's not that there was no mental health problem, nobody talked about it. And if you are slow, slow in school, you're stupid, huh? unable to cope up. Huh? So it's a kind of a survival of the fittest. But you know, this. Children having, uh, I, I know I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, no? I'm a former academic, no? but I, I, I mean, I, I was thinking about all these things, you know, uh, 
And I said, if only children had access to care, access to uh, uh, teaching staff who are professionals, and, and really pay, uh, parents, in short, if the society can look after them, I think there can be a tremendous improvement in actually addressing this mental issue uh, problem among our children. It's a serious issue, a serious issue among workers, workers, as Dr. Sri has pointed out. And um, we had a presentation uh, about a few, a few weeks back on aging. There was a presentation, and I, 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 ha I happened to be reading a book on aging. Because all of us are aging, <laughs> including me. But I was just curious, written by a Harvard professor on aging. So I asked the participant, uh, you, do you think aging is a disease? Yeah, no, 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 no. Aging is not a disease. It cannot be. The word disease conjured a very negative, a very derogatory, uh, what you call imagination. No, aging is a natural process. But you know, leading scientists have said, aging is a disease, you can cure it. You can cure it. I mean, this, and I say, look here, by the way, I'm reading this book on aging by the Harvard professor. And even uh, uh, Hawkins once said, aging is irreversible. He was a Nobel Prize winner. Aging is reversible. And it certainly is not a disease. <laughs> But they were shocked to say when I said, how can you say it's a disease? And people, when the scientists are talking about reversing it, I don't know, lah, you know? And this is the line of thought, no? So certainly it's not, it's not so I felt better, it's a disease, you can correct it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but anyway, coming to this uh, mental anxiety, I, I, you know, I'm very, very careful in choosing the words because some of the words could be very pejorative when you say mental disorder. I, I don't want to use those words. I think we, we'll just talk about mental health. I think that's safe. Huh? That means we don't impose our values on those. And I think most important thing is to actually develop the corrective methods to actually to give a new life, a new uh, lease of life for children, especially in the B40 category and others, even adults. So I think this, what I think Kivanis is doing is something uh, that I think is, is wonderful and I'm sure others are doing the same thing. And today we came together, uh, I think, uh, just to exchange some ideas. I think uh, uh, Dr. Lai and, uh, uh, and, and uh, what's it? Indrani will be a nice name. <laughs> it's, it's a goddess, name of goddess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how can I forget that? So, uh, uh, and I think uh, this is important because I think we have, we have uh, the scientific development uh, to actually to address these issues. And I think it will be uh, very sad. Such scientific developments are not to the benefit of those who are having mental health. No? And, uh, and again, you know, I was just talking to her about SPM exams and all these things. And we know that a lot of students are failing. And students are not even going and taking exams. We can understand during COVID, eh? many didn't sit for exams. But this is after COVID. And this year, it was quite startling. There are thousands who are failing, who have failed, and those who are not sitting for exams. So what this means actually is something is very important, a crisis of the educational system. And we still have the old conventional educational system, which is actually uh, not actually taking us anywhere. Still the emphasis on passing uh, uh, history. If you don't pass history, you fail. That's all, I don't know what, what kind of history I think they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. well, and, and then in Bahasa Melayu, which is a national language, I think once you make them compulsory in the field, are we to say these failures are real failures? You mean to say they don't have any hope? But now the factory is, for, the, 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 the industry is thinking far ahead of this, rather than all these educational practitioners. And I understand, I think I was talking to Dr. Sri, 
In fact, the National Productive Center has come up with the idea of a academia in the in the factories, in the, in the industry, industry. Well, it doesn't matter whether these are failures. I to me, it doesn't matter whether they're failures or not. I think you can train them. I think you can guide them for successful careers yeah, in the industry or elsewhere. Uh, and you know, gig, gig participation in the gig economy is something very temporary. So you can bring back, you know, and you can train them. And I think they will be successful cases. They are not failures because this, because they failed the exam, they are failures. Unfortunately, this is the exam, uh, this education system which has not been really, re uh, you know, uh, there's no thinking how to actually uh, or, or move the education system. And the universities are probably is also having a problem. You know, thousands of graduates are coming out and they don't seem to fit uh, with the uh, demands, demands of the industry and so on and so forth. So I think um, these are some of the very serious issues. But I think going back to the mental health, I think we don't know to the extent of this problem. I think it's a serious problem. And we might not have that. We might have the data, I'm not sure, or the statistics to acknowledge it's a serious problem. We should deal with it in a very open, transparent, and a responsible manner. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, YB Professor Dr. Ramasamy for your great opening speech. Okay, uh, so in, in a, for the gesture of appreciation, we would like to invite uh, YB Professor Ramasamy to come out again, and then we'll invite, we'll have uh, White, uh, Chartered President Dato Sri to give away a memento. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, right now we want to have a group photograph first before we proceed. So uh, we would like to invite uh, Dr. Indrani, can you get Professor Warros, can you sit one here? Then uh, Dr. Lai, and then we we'll all stand to save time. We we'll all stand. Take a picture, group photograph. Uh, uh, and then, uh, Terry, Terry, Terry. Uh, everybody, please come over. No, the whole of you. Huh? This way, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, this way. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. We... And then where's the banner, right? Yeah? Ah. Oh, ah, okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Come on. Do, you, do we sit or do we stand, Terry? Stand. Uh. Stand or sit? Stand. Stand, okay, all stand. And then the mental health, eh? The mental health, huh? Hey, there, hey uh, Stephen, the huh, mental health, eh? Yeah. Can you all come forward, please? Hello? Please come forward. Ah, okay. Okay, everybody, everybody. Look at Terry, huh? Okay, everyone, huh? <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Uh, before we begin our talk, I'd like to give a few housekeeping reminders. Uh, first of all, have your mobile phone uh, on a vibrating or in a silent mode so that you will avoid noise disruption. There's a 
after this talk, there's going to be a light refreshment. So help yourself, get acquainted with the Penang Institute, with the Kiwanis members, and with uh, you know, the speakers. Uh, we also have mineral water, but please don't throw away the, the, the bottle because we are afraid that we might not have enough. So please recycle the recycle by filling up at the dispenser there, right? Uh, we also have a donation box. Our projects and events are run on a voluntary basis and uh, it's FOC. Therefore, ge uh, please donate generously. And in order for us to improve our event, we have a feedback form. You can just scan the feedback form and then there are some questions there. You can answer it, right? But at the same time, we were also going to send the, the uh, evaluation link to you all. For those of you who are registered, we already captured your email and we'll send the, uh, the feedback evaluation. Okay? Right. Now, in this modern era and in this digital age, everything runs at a faster pace, at a faster speed. And we are all overwhelmed with our, you know, our, our, our work, our personal matters, our family matters. And that's where anxiety sets in because we are so overwhelmed. There's so many things to read now. You know, the WhatsApp, huh? there's so many chat groups and so forth. And I, even, and I even heard that uh, some parents, they have, don't know how many chats from the teachers itself, from the group teachers itself as well. So this is where we are. So our speaker for today is a very qualified and well-known in, in the field of mental health. And they will be able to share the wealth of experience and knowledge with us. But before we begin, let me give you a little brief profile of, of them. Let me start with... Uh, let me start with Dato Dr. Lai Fong Hua. Dr. Dr. Lai Fong Hua is a consultant, child and family psychiatrist, a cognitive behavior therapist, family and couple therapist. After graduating in medicine and psychiatry from University of Malaya, Dr. Lai Fong Hua served in Hospital Pulau Pinang from 1994 till his retirement in 2019. He was awarded a JPA scholarship to pursue child and adolescent psychiatry and cognitive behavior therapy in Oxford, UK in 2001. Now, Dr. Lai's firm belief in the effectiveness of a multidisciplinary approach to child psychiatry led to the establishment of different services through smart partnerships with NGOs. He also has a special interest in managing trauma and emotional distress. Dr. Lai continues to practice psychiatry and psychotherapy and conducts professional workshops. He's very active in community service pertaining to mental health and serves in several NGOs. Although Dr. Lai only has 2% sight, he's able to read and write independently with the help of apps and devices. Let's give uh, Dr. Dr. Lai a chance. Right. Okay, the next... Uh, the next bio data I'd like to read is Datin Indrani Liu. Datin Indrani is a mental health advocate and trainer, special education and behavior management consultant. He's a UK and IGCSE curriculum consultant. IGCSE stands for International General Certificate of Secondary Education, which is equivalent to SPM. Datin Indrani has 34 years teaching experience in Malaysia and England where she holds Qualified Teacher Status, QTS. Her experience teaching in England developed into a passion for training teachers in positive teaching strategies. Indrani consults with international schools on the UK curriculum, IGCSE, Teaching English, Teacher Development, and conducts monthly training for preschool teachers. Indrani is also a certified English speaking examiner and trainer for a renowned UK university. Indrani works with students on behavior and learning strategies to enable them to function in inclusive classrooms. A mental health advocate, Indrani is very active in community work pertaining to mental health and education. She also sits on the Penang Education Council and Wawasan Open University Penang research ethics spot. So let's give both of them a very warm applause. Yeah. So I'd like to I'd like to invite I'd like to invite Dr. Indrani and the, okay uh, we have a QA so keep your question first and we have a 20 minutes QA after they have finished the session. Okay, okay. Thank you. Right. Um, thank you so much. 
I am here to support my husband. I read the slides. He does the explanation. Then sometimes I will put something in as well. Okay. Uh, just to let you know why all our slides are black, it's because Dr. Lai types uh, his own reports and letters and he can also do PowerPoint. The software speaks. Okay? Right, danger in the garden, a friend's story. Since we are talking about anxiety, uh, let me tell you an a anxious uh, story. Right? We have uh, this friend who lives in a uh, uh, certain garden. And then one, one evening, she went out looking for her cat in the garden. And then suddenly, she saw the cat in one corner, frozen, you know, not moving. So she called the cat, you know, pussy, pussy, and then the cat doesn't move, which is very strange. Usually the pussy will come straight to her. And then suddenly he, she heard a hiss sound, right? And she looked at the, the direction of the hiss sound, and there was this king cobra, right? And, and, and she herself also froze, and she didn't dare to do anything. So she called her, her, her friend in the house, and then to shine the light on the, the, the cobra. And, and for that, that moment, he wasn't sure what will happen next. Guess, guess what is her anxiety level 0 to 10? So it will probably go up to 10, right? Oh no, 15, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but she didn't move, and then uh, the cat didn't move, and the cobra didn't move. <laughs> So she played the waiting game, and in the end, the cobra was impatient. He yeah. decided not to play the game. He started going down and, and slid off. Slid it off. So, so, yeah. so anxiety can happen in our daily life, uh, sometimes due to real danger like the cobra. Other times, uh, the danger may be just in our mind. Right? Next. The anxiety equation. So anxiety all right, is actually... All fullness of the outcome times likelihood it will happen. Those of you who likes maths, uh, ah. this one is a good <laughs> equation. Okay, yeah. Anxiety uh, is actually proportional to your the, coping ability. Yeah, the dangerousness of the event. So example, you're, you're afraid to fly in the aeroplane, right? So the dangerousness, if, if the aeroplane crash, you know, very dangerous, right? It's a very dangerous thing. But the probability is actually very low. So when you times the dangerousness to the probability, actually the, the chances of, of the plane crashing is very, very low. But the person who ha has anxiety, all right, won't think so. Lah. Yeah. And then it's divided by the person's ability to cope. Right? So, so the, my friend in the garden with the cobra, the danger is very high. The probability of it striking is also very high, but she has she has learned about you know this kind of situation before and what she can do. So so her, her ability to cope is also high. So that helps her to be calmer, right? And then and then plus the uh, uh, coping ability and rescue opportunities. Yeah. So external help, who can come and help? So his friend is there. So if, if the, the cobra really strike, then, then the friend is there to send her straight to the hospital. Yeah. Next. Right. So the next time you are worried about something, uh, write, write down this equation. You know, ask yourself, how dangerous is my situation? What is the probability? What is my ability to cope? And who is there to help? And when you, when you sort of put this in perspective, it can sometimes help you to be less anxious. Okay. Uh, we, we have provided a PDF copy of our slides and we've asked uh, Kiwanis to actually just send it to all of you. All right. Okay. What's the difference between anxiety and anxiety disorder? I need okay. to move nearer that side to read. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so and, anxiety sorry. is a normal feeling. All of us have been anxious before. Right. Uh, uh, any anything that can can make us anxious. If we are late for for work, we get anxious. Right. Uh, if if we suddenly can't find our wallet with our IC and 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 money, we get anxious. So anxiety is something quite normal that all of us 
has experienced. When does that become a disorder? Uh, there are two words. When, when the anxiety becomes too intense, too intense, that means too strong. Usually when you're anxious, 0 to 10, where anxiety may go up to 5, 6, 7. If our anxiety is all, all, the, all the while 10, you know, throughout the whole past two weeks or past one month, then, then it's not normal already. Okay, so the intensity and second is the duration. Okay, if usually when we are anxious, the anxiety goes away. After, after a few hours or one, two days, then it goes off. But if the anxiety keeps coming back to disturb us until we can't sleep the whole night, uh, then, then it becomes a disorder. So, so disorder is when the anxiety uh, affects our ability to work and affects our daily life okay, with our family, with, uh, with our self-care. Okay. Put up your hand if you've got worried before an exam. I have uh, almost everyone, right? Okay, uh, okay. But then, uh, but then, do we still go for exam? We still go, but there are children so anxious until cannot go for exam. It happens, anxiety disorder. So actually, um, we need to help our children, teach them some techniques to cope with anxiety so they don't end up with a test anxiety issue. Okay. Thanks. Different types of anxiety. Okay? There is panic disorder, whereby suddenly you feel, all right, it's, apparently it's like you're having a heart attack. Pump, all right, your, your heart will be thumping and you feel so terrible, right? Then you have generalized anxiety disorder, where person is always very worried about things. Nothing. Drive, so, want to drive to town, he's worried. Yeah. Want to go to the People bank, People may call worried. you a worrier. Yeah, right? worrier. A worrier, yeah. 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 Pergi supermarket pun worrier. All right. Then there are people who have phobia. Who has a snake phobia or spider phobia? Uh, and I know a lot of young people, including young men, who's got who have cockroach phobia. Yeah. If a cockroach were to run run in front of me, uh, I would I would be jumping up the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, in my house, I have four guys. This one and my three sons. Guess who is a cockroach killer? <laughs> I can actually just grab a cockroach like this. Uh. Yeah, yeah. And then it feels very funny. It, it will be tickling because uh, of the six feet I'm moving. So some people are now going getting anxiety already. <laughs> when when right. Injani was young, uh, there were two boys who liked to bully her. Yeah. So one day she actually catch a cockroach and, and put, shove it, it down the... put it down their, their neck. <laughs> After that, they didn't dare to touch her. Nobody! <laughs> See, there are different ways. I can also teach you how to catch a uh, chicha no! without the tail dropping off. But technique on. Ah, catch flies. Now you know why my mother never had another child. <laughs> Cannot the hand. Okay. Then uh, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. What? These are, these are, you know, you hear people washing their hands many, many times a yeah. day. And uh, until they, they use up the soap, you know, uh, use up the shampoo. So, so OCD can be quite debilitating. Sometimes they, they check the, the, the door again and again and again and again and again. Uh, doesn't make sense. They themselves know it doesn't make sense. But somehow the anxiety caused them to, to cannot but, but obey the, the urges. Next. Uh, social anxiety disorder. Okay. Uh, there, there are some teen, uh, teenagers, young adults who have this social anxiety. I, I used to have one uh, young man who wanted to learn how to drive. He went to this driving school. He didn't dare to go in because there were people inside the driving school. He has to wait until everybody went out and only the driving instructor was there. Then only he went in. So that kind of anxiety. He was afraid that uh, the people then may ask her, you know, how come you are already so old, you haven't learned how to drive? Don't know why he's so, I mean, so particular about that, but 
you know, for others, you know, you want to ask us, you know, nothing to do with me. But, but for him, is is that kind of anxiety. So, sure, can you imagine someone has a social anxiety disorder? Do you think that person can attend job interview? Problem or not a problem? It interferes with your life. Right? Okay. Going to apply for a passport from immigration is going to be a big problem. The queues of people and all that. Then there is a, okay, post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. Is, is there any trauma that, that affects a person until they, they, they cannot, they, they become so anxious? So usually children who have school phobia, who are afraid to go to school, uh, many of them have trauma of being bullied by other children or, or being scolded, uh, by teacher. scolded by teacher. So that, that image sort of, every time they go near the school, that image comes up and their anxiety shoots up. You know? so, so they don't dare to step into the school. Yeah. PTSD, um, actually, it started off with the American soldiers who fought in the Vietnam War and went back. And they could not cope with life. Okay, they could not cope with life. Uh, then you have September 11. And you realize that it's not just the rescuers, you know. It's the family members and the rest who watched it on TV. And they were... They had, uh, they were affected by post-traumatic stress disorder. And that was when psychiatrists you know, started and coming up with ways to help. All right. So someone who's had uh, been in a car, bad car accident, after that, what happens? You feel like you don't want to drive anymore, right? Your hand may shake. But then yeah, yeah, slowly, that, that is PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. But usually it goes off. Lah. But if it continues to be there after months and years, then, then it's... It's a chronic problem. You need to get treatment. So anything, actually, <clears throat> literally anything that stops you from normal functioning. Okay. All right. Next. Now, uh, inter emotional thermometer. This is a useful uh, uh, tool to use to help people who are anxious. So it's an imaginary thermometer and usually it's rated 0 to 10. On the, this one is for anger. Okay, this is for anger. Cool at the bottom, at the top, explosion like what? Volcano. So when, when let's say your teenager becomes quite angry, you can ask him, you know, 0 to 10, how, how angry do you feel now? Or how angry do you feel when your friend said that to you? So he can give you a number. Okay. Right? This, this helps them to be self-aware. Once you are more aware of your own feelings, then, then you are able to deal with, deal with the anxiety. It also helps us when you want to find out actually how upset someone is. If the person says uh, two or three, that means not particularly. Wow, nine or ten. And you can use this concept of an emotional uh, thermometer to measure different types of feelings. It can be happiness, sadness, tiredness. Okay? okay. So anyone who says that they are always nine, ten, nine, ten, ah. That's when need they need help. help. Okay, yeah. Next. Right. This is uh, Christine Padeski's hot cross bun. Okay. Um, Christine Padeski is a cognitive therapist. Uh, she, she came up with this model uh, where you divide how you are feeling into four parts. So you may one day feel very distressed, right? Very distressed. Something happened and you feel quite distressed, and you don't know how, you get confused. So what you can do is just, just take a piece of paper, draw this, these four parts, okay? Then you put down, okay, what am I feeling in my body? That means, you know, maybe you feel tense, your heart is beating fast, you are sweating. So you write down, you write down, my body feels this way, right? Then, what am I feeling emotionally? I, I feel angry, I feel upset. And then, Behavior, what are you doing? So I, I, I don't want to talk to people, I shut my door, you know, I don't want to let people come near me. The problem is when people, usually guys, try to what? Medicate themselves this way, yeah. their behavior. And then, uh, and then the, the thought, the thought is what, what is going through my mind when I'm so upset? What is going through my mind? Uh, maybe we think that 
Oh, the guy oh, doesn't no. respect me. The I guy, you know, back. look down on me. Oh, so so we write that on all this. Then then you you actually help to uh, feel better because you start to start to have a better picture of what is happening. Yeah. We tend to mix our emotions with our emotions with our thinking and all that. Mm -mm. So this one helps you to divide. By the way, it's called hot cross bun because in England at Easter, traditionally they'll bake this bun and it's got a cross on it. Okay. okay. Next. Okay. Now, what we may feel when we are anxious. So we are, it's divided into physical, psychological, and social behavioral. So when you are anxious, maybe you start breathing very fast, very rapidly. Okay, then you can feel your heart. Tuk, 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 tuk. Yeah. So coming back to that friend of ours, you know, with the cobra next yeah. to her, and she uh, she may probably feel her heart beating very fast, and she may be sweating. Yeah, okay. her, her muscle may be tense. Very tense. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other the people say they have a butterfly in their stomach. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. Okay. Psychological, you may have be your thoughts may be very anxious, and you are feeling very fearful. Okay. So you think of all the the possibilities, lah, you know, if if the cobra bites me, I have only how many minutes to get to the hospital before I die, kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, so all these uh, dangerous kind of thinking. Yeah. Social behavioral, avoidant behavior. So behavior for, for her is she, she just stands still lah, and then she shout to the friend. Mm -hmm. uh, people say snakes are deaf, so you can shout as loud as you like, the snake can't hear you. <laughs> Ah, yeah, they feel vibrations. Okay. So, obviously, when I speak, the, the fellow will feel the vibration because uh, I'm too loud. <laughs> All yeah. right. Now, avoidant behavior can be a child who has been uh, scared of the teacher, been caned before, didn't get the spelling right. Okay, got made mistakes. So, what will happen is that avoidant means that mm. Okay. Safety behavior. Uh, so, safety behavior, like, like checking behaviors. Lah. You know, checking you're, your... you're worried that your house may be broken into, so you go and check your alarm 10 times, 20 times, 30 times until your husband scolds you. So, yeah, that's, that's safety behavior. You check once or twice, you understand. But if you keep checking and then uh, you wake up at night, you go and check again. Okay. Uh, positive coping behavior. Okay. Then, then this is this is a, a good way of dealing with anxiety when when you feel anxious like like you do the, the equation just now okay is it really dangerous what is the probability uh yeah so so we we do a positive coping uh behavior kind of thing yeah. with them I, I once had a teenage girl who has ocd and her ocd is this very strange she, when she goes out on the road, she's afraid that she may accidentally kick a pebble, a, a small stone, and the small stone may land up in somebody's car, engine. and that engine may break down and land up in an accident and kill people. And she is responsible for the stone. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when she walks, she walks so slowly ah. until the parents get so upset. You know, you know? why she walks like this? Make sure she doesn't accidentally kick a stone, a pebble. So, so I, I got her to do an experiment. I said, okay. Let's do an experiment. One week, you walk very carefully. Make sure you don't, don't, don't kick any stone. Okay. The next week, you simply walk, kick as many stones as you want. And then the following week, very careful walking. And then the, the fourth week, uh, simply walk. Right. And at the end of the month, you collect all the newspaper and you count how many car accidents in Penang. <laughs> And see whether on the on the week where you simply walk was there more car accidents, yeah. So so is it is <laughs> after doing this experiment she stopped stopped doing that <laughs> because she found that it's actually the same. Right? So you cannot say no that it won't happen. What silly car thinking? Still, so this experiment helped. You got to prove it. Okay, next, how real is the danger? This is. As seen by my best friend and as I see see it. Okay. These are techniques that you can help your friends who are anxious. Okay. So you can ask her, you know, how real is the danger for, for your friend who is anxious, they will think that it's very real. Uh. Then you ask her, who is your best friend? You know, maybe Amy or John. Okay. 
if John were in your shoes, do you think he will be equally anxious? Then you say, no, la, John is, you know, sky can fall down, so he won't be anxious. But then, then I'll say, why, why, why can John be so calm? So you help him to think in a different way. Yeah? Next. Tools to help cope with anxiety. Okay, I'll uh, share with you other tools that can help with, uh, with anxiety, reducing anxiety. One is PHQ-9. <laughs> this is the patient help questionnaire. Nine, nine for nine questions. You can go online. Okay, what I want you to do is quickly take out your phone, uh, Google, and you type PHQ-9. Yeah, one minute. Okay. Take PHQ out your phone, yeah. go to Google, and you type PHQ-9. PHQ is Patient Health Questionnaire. There are nine statements. This should this is on my Google search MD Calc with a green uh, crosser. This is number two. I would like you to do use this because the program, the app, will actually calculate for you. Okay, I won't ask you to share your your score. This is for yourself to know. But you quickly go through the the statements and and quickly. You know, choose zero, one, two, three, and then you get the total score. Okay, if you have found the the question, you just quickly do. I, I won't ask you to share your number, your, your score. Huh? I just tell you how to how to uh, score the the yourself. You can you can use this for your family members if you feel any of your family members or friend who are also quite anxious you can ask them to do the same yeah. questionnaire mm. teenagers can also use this PSQA, right? 9A, ah, right? Well, yeah doesn't matter mm. finish oh Uh, just give me, just lift up your hand if you are finished, because Dr. Lloyd would like to teach us how to score. Thank you. I got one, two, three. Okay, four persons, five. Okay. Others who have mm. you have finished, just show me your hand. Okay, the more yeah. have finished. Right. So the, the way to score is you, you just add up all the the no. your answers, right? Or your computer will, will add that for you. So zero to ten is actually quite normal. So if your, your score is anything below ten, it's quite normal. Uh, ten to fifteen. Uh, you you are under a bit of stress, so so which is also quite normal. So like 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 YB under stress is quite normal for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's his job. <laughs> okay, so sixteen to twenty is moderately severe depression, and then above twenty is severely depressed. So it is it is the above sixteen, like, especially above twenty that that you get a bit more worried, okay? So, so you need to go and get some help. Uh, so basically, if someone scores 16 to about 19, uh, ting, 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 the alarm should go ting, ting, ting. But if it's above, uh, nine, above 19, 20 plus, then it will be ting, 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 or rather, ee -oh, ee -oh, please go and see somebody. Yeah. So, so, this, this is actually a, a, a scoring for depression. But why do depression in anxiety talk? It's because people who are depressed get easily anxious. Okay? Anxiety comes together with depression. A lot of times, if you treat the depression, the anxiety goes away. Uh, we, we have come across many elderly people. Uh, uh, YB professor was sharing about you know, growing old. Yeah, as we grow older, that there is a higher chance of us becoming depressed. And elderly people, when they become depressed, they get very anxious. So we have an 
elderly gentleman who, who asked the, came out asking the son, take me to see the doctor, keep me to see the doctor. So the son will take him to see the doctor. The doctor check everything, okay already, come home. When he reached the home, he said, ah, I want to see the doctor again. So ask the son to take him again to see the doctor. So, so he goes to see the doctor many times. Ah. <laughs> yes, 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 it's yes, a, yes. It's a, what a side effect of it's drug. A, it's a normal, normal depression. <laughs> okay. So, um, older people get okay. One is they get more anxious, and then you may get very irritated. No, here pain, there pain. We'll see this and that. Okay, down. Oh, but you must understand, uh, older people, some of them. When they are depressed, they are angry, always scolding people and all that. So one is very worried about health. Another one is just irritable, but there's another one is always angry. Mm. So be careful. Uh, you need to take them for. Then there are some doesn't talk, don't want to eat. Now then you start getting very worried. Mm. But the reason why older people have a higher risk of depression is this. Eat also cannot taste food. Then got some... Teeth, no gum problem. Okay, sleep cannot sleep properly. Hear cannot hear properly. And then, uh, if you look at the obituary in the newspaper, oh, yo, I know this guy, like, he died already. Then uh, two weeks later, oh, another one died. So basically, that's why they're depressed. Uh. Everything also in the negative. Yeah. And that's why also that, like uh, Professor Rab Sami was saying, the Penang State Government is trying to do something about that. Okay. okay so don't be so irritable, the older, older ones. Are. <laughs> okay. I mean, don't, don't try to be less irritable. I appreciate it. Okay. 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 Aladdin's magic lamp. Mm. Okay. One, one, one of the things you can help a person who is anxious, you can ask him, suppose you go to the beach and you found Aladdin's magic lamp and you get one wish, what would you? How would you use that one wish to help yourself? Cannot uh, use the one wish to, to uh, ask for more wishes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the one wish. Because sometimes this, this question can reveal what, what is really troubling the person. You know, sometimes they are they're actually worried maybe about their children overseas. And you may think that they are worried about the current situation, but they are not. You know, they, they may be worried about all people actually yeah. quite often say this, I wish my children will contact me and communicate more with me. So, so things like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, just, you, so want them to get, you want them to get a, do a wish on your own? No, no, no. no. Okay. okay. So remember what is you, you can wish? go. You can go home and wish. <laughs> the next. Facing your fears, exposure and response prevention. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay, next. Uh, 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 okay, you'll, you'll come up the butterfly tap. Oh, you want to do that one first? Uh, okay. Download arrow. Do you want to uh, arrow now or later? Later, I teach them the butterfly tap. Okay, now we are going to teach you a technique butterfly tap. Dr. Lai taught one of his patients, and then the next time the patient came for follow up, Dr. Lai, uh, you know the butterfly tap you taught me? I saw it on Korean drama. So, the, so the psychologist okay, is using the butterfly tap. Tap, uh, you know, going drama. So suddenly, uh, oh, his stature increased. <laughs> okay. okay. How do you use the butterfly tap? Uh, you, you put whatever is troubling you or anxious about, you put it in front of you. Imagine so, it. So, like, like a child who is afraid to go to school, right? So, I ask them, okay, if I put a picture of your school in front of you, what? How, how anxious would you feel? So they may say 10. Emotional thermometer. Yeah. Okay, okay then butterfly tap is you cross your hands, you, you lock your thumb, so it looks a bit like a butterfly, you put it on your body. The thumbs are touching, yeah? And you tap left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, very lightly tap left, right, left, right, left, right. So you look at the picture that is making you anxious, uh, it also works with anger, you know. Anybody who makes you angry, you put his face in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you tap, uh, you, you actually find, find your anger going down. No, uh, some people, what happens is that the anger will go up. 
Ah, first, in the beginning you go up and then after that you go down. Then after that you tap another two times. Ah, it goes down. So you tap for about one, two, three minutes until until the you feel calmer. Right? You keep tapping, tapping, tapping. So don't worry if it goes up in the beginning, because it's something you don't like, right? Or you're scared of. So uh, then tap again and again, maybe two, three times. Each time one minute, two, three times. Then when you check yourself, your feelings, your emotions, you'll notice that you should be calmer. So what, uh, for children who are afraid to go to school, I'll get the mother to drive the child in front of the school gate, right? And stop there. And then uh, ask the child, ask the mother and the child to do the butterfly tap, tap, tap until the child's anxiety goes down. Then only let him go in. Yeah. Uh, what Dr. Lai has done is for those children who are really anxious, okay, about school, so they end up with school refusal. So first thing is like, Stop and look at the school, then go home. The next day, all right, try get permission to drive inside the school. Then sit down there and look around and tap, then go home. Then the third day, go inside the school, okay, hold the child's hand just to walk, maybe walk to the canteen, not the classroom, huh? walk to the canteen, out. So this goes on, so we, we call this very gradual desensitization. Okay, you don't just push them to school. Okay, okay. So you, you can also use this butterfly tap for like nightmare, you know. Some some people have these recurrent nightmares ah. that keep on coming back to disturb you. You you can just catch, take a photo of the yes. yeah. Okay, Thank okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, thanks, 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 Audi. Oh, Thank you. One thing available online. There are a lot of exercises you do take while you're seated. So for older people, look. Maybe you want to take a photo. You don't have to stand up. Nothing to jato. Take a photo. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay. 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 Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. What is the next one? Calm the app. <coughs> okay. There's one app you can you can download on uh, from App Store or, or Google Play. You can use it for free, but if you want more features. Uh, it, it, this is this is uh, recognized by psychologists overseas, so so it's quite quite a uh, good. Uh, good it's app. the one the blue on the top, yeah, and then uh, neurofeedback. Okay, neurofeedback is uh, is something you wear on your head, and then the wires link to your computer, right? And then the the program teaches you to increase your your calming waves. So we, we all have a beta wave when we are uh, uh, alert, okay? Alpha wave, which is uh, calmer. And then uh, theta wave is uh, when we are sleeping. So, so I, I'm not a neuro, neuro feedback specialist. So, so you, 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 will, you can get this uh, nowadays online. You can get it from Singapore. It costs 200 sing dollar. Okay, quite, quite. Basically, what you're doing Affordable. is you're using your brain. Uh, there are some whereby, you know, you, you must move this ball up. You know? So you look at it, okay? And then as you adjust, uh, you will see it going up. Okay. So, you're so learning. when you do this, you actually train your brain to calm down. Yeah. For those who have, you know, people who are very anxious, you, you, you get hold of this. It helps you to train your brain to calm down. Okay. Uh, th there is this site called Brainlink. Brain B R A I N L I N K. Uh, you can Google Brainlink. You can find. Okay. Right. Next. Exercise. <laughs> okay. I put this. Uh, notice or not? It's a chair exercise. There are a lot of exercises you can do seated. And this is actually a good way to start, or for older people as well. 
There's one thing about for older people, you notice they fall a lot. You know what the issue is that there are two issues. One is their sight may not be so good. So they sort of like trip and fall. So one of the things you need to do is wherever there are steps you know, going up and down, you need to put the like a yellow strip so they can see it or stronger light. Now, the other reason why they fall is because their legs are weak. They've been sitting down. Right? So the legs are weak. Then there's another problem. The other problem is, you know what? Sorry, the leg. Uh, what does the body shape look like? Wider here, right? So wider on top, but very small at the bottom. Two thin legs like that. Jato <laughs> okay, so actually you can go online, just, you just put that exercise chair and then exercise, you'll find a lot of different ones. So exercise can help to reduce anxiety, right? Uh, yeah, so if you're helps. anxious, get, get your friend to go and exercise with you. There are some whereby uh, the person stands up but they <coughs> use the chair for support. Lots of different, uh, uh, different ways of exercising, so please go and look, uh, go and hunt for some. Yes. Spending time with friends. Yeah, that, 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 you all know, uh, listen, when you're anxious, go and spend time with friends, find some good friends, uh, not, not friends that will make you even more anxious. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. The other thing about spending time with friends, uh, actually, let's see, let's talk about the women. You know what would be nice? Just say, you, especially those with younger children, you arrange with two, three other ladies who have children, and what you do is you arrange for the husbands to take the children out to, to play somewhere. There are some, I think, um, shopping complexes, they have indoor playground, right? Ah, all right. Just basically just disappear for four or five hours, go away. Then the ladies can be at somebody's home, all right? You know what you can do? Uh? Can you do manicure, pedicure for each other? Fun, right? And then uh, you don't have to pay so much, you go. Other things you can do, all right? You can just be uh, exchanging recipe. Maybe you all go to and go, each of you want to make what? Bake a, some cake or cookies to take home. So there are different things that can be done. Thanks. Now there's something to think. Hmm. Thanks, thanks. Nothing you can do, you no. Know, exchange clothes. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Right? Any more? Now they're all thinking. Hmm. The husbands, uh, the men must, must support this. You know why? Finish. Don't spend money, ma. <laughs> <laughs> if they go walking in a shopping complex, you die. Now, you haven't done the other thing. Uh, never mind, never mind. Of course, you want to do a Q&A. Okay. All right. Uh, questions and discussion. Before that, just let me tell you, um, I've started an online ADHD group, support group. One is for parents. Their, their children, either children or teens have ADHD. And they are going crazy. They don't know what to do. So they can join the group. And the group also welcomes adults with ADHD. Because their work... They have problems with employment. Okay, so they can just you can just text me and say that you or maybe you want to forward to your friends, you can join the group. Okay. Uh, just check with the MC. Is it time for Q and A or? It is. Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on. Okay. And one more thing, I run a mental health news uh, WhatsApp group. <clears throat> there should be about two hundred plus. If people would like to have uh, <clears throat> receive news, the latest news on mental health, you also uh, WhatsApp me. My number will be in the PDF of the slides which you will receive. Okay. Questions? Dr. Lai and I love questions. You know why? Because it means that you are interested and you want to know more. All right? There is no such thing as a stupid question. You just want to know. It. Unless you come and ask us, uh, what is ABC then? Hmm. <laughs> okay? If not, you're most welcome to ask, all right? And then everyone can learn. Yeah. How is yes. Panic attack? What about panic attack? Anything to do with anxiety? And yeah. yeah, panic attack is uh, one of the more severe form of anxiety. So it, it comes out of the blue. Certainly it comes. And then when it comes, the anxiety can shoot up. You know, like, like in a thermometer, uh, 0 to 10 so, is the anxiety level, when panic attack comes, it actually can shoot up to 100. Literally. So the person actually feels really frightened. Very they frightened. Cannot breathe. <laughs> cannot breathe, okay? And then after that, the, the more you feel that you cannot breathe, the more anxious you get. 
then the heart will thump and all that. So, Apparently, it's exactly as if you're having heart attack or something. Or you're going to die, or you're going to faint. Or... So, so yeah. how, what do they do? They try and calm down. So usually, uh, many of them will go to the accident emergency and yeah. they will cause the doctors there to have a panic attack. <laughs> 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 but, but after doing the ECG, everything normal, then they go home until the next time they get another attack. So every time ECG normal after that, uh, then maybe it's actually not a heart problem. So it's, it's, actually, a, it's actually a psychological problem. Uh. He needs to go and see a... A psychologist or psychiatrist. And then um, you, that person will be taught nah, certain things like breathing exercises and all that. Another thing is this, if you will try and see whether what is the trigger for your panic attack, then we need to do something about that. Yeah. Questions? I want to understand what's the psychology of this uh, the the panic attack. How does it really help? It's, uh, it's actually based on, uh, don't know whether you have come across the EMDR. EMDR was uh, something discovered by a psychologist called uh, Francine Shapiro. Okay? EMDR is eye movement desensitization reprocessing where, where she gets you to, to follow the finger and look left and right, left and right. Okay, And then people found out that Anything that you do that, that crosses the midline will have the same effect. So the butterfly tap is, is uh, when you tap alternately, you actually cross the midline. Right? So what, what happens in the brain when you do the tapping? You, you link the left and the right brain. Uh, and especially when you focus on the, the thing that you are fearful of. So something in the brain sort of gets uh, integrated integrated. Usually when we are anxious, uh, the anxiety gets stuck in one part of our brain. So when we do the tapping, it actually dilutes it and, and moves it to, to the other side of the brain. So, yeah. Um, mid, crossing the midline. Okay. All of us, sorry, that didn't keep. Okay. All of us, we have one midline is down here. Straight down. And then, you know that brain that brain, right? There's one more midline. Here. So you have one which is vertical and one is horizontal. Okay, so uh, I will be very concerned okay, because I'm my church in the gardens uh, I will look at the children and I will be concerned. If I have, I see children, you know, so sort of like always use the right hand. It's like the left hand is not there. No, then, or they appear to be very clumsy. Okay, cannot stand on one foot and things like that. I will actually do some crossing the midline exercises because you need to right and left. You don't have a stroke. If you have a, someone has a stroke and cannot move on the right, which part of the brain was? That's why I think it's cross. So we want it to what? Uh, we do exercises now to get that to connect. So for children, we will do that. So it could be exercises like this. And then also, we, are, we also notice one thing. Some children cannot write properly because midnight. All right? So we will also do also. There are actually a lot of exercises available. And one more thing, just to let you know, if, there, if a child did not crawl when he was a baby, you know some, they just pull themselves and then they just stand on. They don't go crawling. They're going to have a problem. Why? How do you crawl? Right, left. Right, left. Ah. That, was, that is another issue. Okay, so crossing the... So uh, in kindergarten, especially when the children came back from COVID last year, we did a lot of all that. We make it fun uh, with music. and uh, okay? There are a lot of uh, YouTube videos on midnight, crossing the midnight on uh, that you, you may want to do uh, just for fun. Okay? Yes? Yes. Hello, I'm Suryani. I'm from USM, University of Science Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have a friend who's diagnosed with bipolar disorder type 2. So uh, recently, what happened to this friend is there's another friend who didn't pick up her call continuously. So she was very worried. And then she came to me and she she uh, tell, tell her concern. Lah. 
that the friend is not picking up her call makes her very very anxious so to satisfy her i actually because this friend she actually insists me to check with other friend insists me many times please check please check i'm very worried i'm very anxious that this friend is not picking up picking up my call so i i actually i check with the the other friend and then uh, i ask hey why why did you not pick up her call and everything are you trying to avoid her or something and she actually said that no actually not i'm just busy with uh, some things actually i'm not avoiding her uh, or cutting my ties with her or anything but this friend turns up to be very anxious started to overthink and thinking that the friend is uh, not friending her avoiding her and everything so uh, i try to convince my friend many times in a positive way but uh, i feel that her anxiousness is already like triggered very high already how uh, can i know like how can i actually calm her down or help her not to overthink take it in a positive way and sort of things thank you you can use an emotional thermometer when she's very anxious huh? ask her zero to ten how anxious do you feel about this friend when she's not answering your phone call so if she'll probably say nine or ten huh? then uh what what thoughts go through your mind she'll probably think that no oh, i'm afraid she may commit suicide or something right um what I, then what makes you think she will commit suicide my, how likely is it my my guess is she may have come across other previous cases where someone maybe committed suicide or tried to kill themselves that's why she's so oh. anxious now lah. You just ask her and see lah. Do, do you was there in the past anything happened? It could like be this something happening? like, uh, say for she's very anxious because last time, uh, say three years ago, she kept calling the cousin brother, and he never didn't reply. And then later on, they found out he died in an accident. That's why he didn't respond. You see, the phone was there. Yeah. So so you can uh, let her talk about the 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 that that issue or that yeah. that event. If, yeah get, get her to talk about the the thing that really upsets her so the thing that really upsets her could be something in the past you know some maybe she remember something but but if if still cannot then you have to ask her to go and see a counselor or a yeah. psychologist yes thank you okay. How do you um, uh, solve problems for uh, with people who have intrusive thoughts? And uh, and I have a second question. I've read about uh, this um, medically coined word on uh, highly sensitive person, and they tend to have anxiety. This anxiety, like high, highly uh, high anxiety. And uh, normally, what are the traits of these people? Highly sensitive person. Okay. It, and my, it, my first question was like intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thought. Uh, intrusive thoughts are thoughts that come to your mind, all right, when you don't expect it to, or it comes in your mind when you're doing something else and it, uh, it, it, it affects you. Like, yeah. One of the things you can try doing is when it comes, uh, you freeze it. You catch it and you freeze it and you put it in front of you. And do the butterfly tap. Ah, and then you, before you do that, you, you look at the intrusive thought. How, what, what is your feeling towards this thought? You know, are you anxious? Are you upset? Are you... Angry? Uh, how, how upset or how anxious or angry are you? Zero to ten. And then you tap on this thought. And keep tapping until the, the thing goes down or it changes to something else. For some people, the after tapping a while, the picture changes. The other one is the hypersensitivity. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it online. It's something that is uh, sort of like uh, quite new. HSP. Yeah, HSP. I don't know whether it's linked to Asperger's or not. Uh, more like ASD, uh, autism spectrum disorder. Yeah. 
Thai function. Yeah. Uh, Asperger. Yeah. You, you, there's a website called uh, Autism Hangout. You go and, and there's a corner there that says, Ask Dr. Tony Atwood. You can type your question and he will try and answer. It's Autism Hangout. Hangout. Like, hey, let's go and hang out at wherever. So H A N G O U C. So you Google Autism Hangout, you can go and have a look. Okay. Any other? Oh, yeah. Yes. Hi, Dato and Datin. Uh, I have a question. How can we help a differently challenged kid with anxiety? She is nonverbal and she is she can't express herself, and it's a bit difficult to approach her. Also, she is very uh, she can be aggressive if. Uh, ASD is it? Uh, no. no. How old is she? Yeah, yeah. She is ASD. Uh, she has a. Uh, there is autism she is a spectrum. teenage She's girl, older. actually. How old is she? She is a teenage girl. She is fifteen to sixteen years old. Mm -hmm. I, I would use the the creative approach uh, Get get her to see a play therapist or a art therapist. Because talking doesn't work with her, so. Get her to do some some play or art therapy. Um, you can contact Priscilla Ho. Okay, so if you go online, Priscilla Ho and uh, Creativity at Heart. At Heart, there's a name of her place. If you cannot find it, then you can WhatsApp me. All right, all right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, um, just to let you know, creative uh, this kind of creative, whether it's drawing, art, or using all sorts of objects like small toys huh, to make a picture, it actually help, helps that child, that person to actually communicate. Because especially with children, they do have feelings, huh, but they don't know how to communicate because their vocabulary is very, very little. So I can just tell you this uh, example. Uh, we had a, a boy, six years old. Uh, mother brought him, okay? The boy is staying with the mom. The parents are in the midst of divorce. So Dr. Lai asked him to do a tray, a tray about you no know, his life, current life. So this is what he did. Huh? So you have a tray. He took all the dollhouse toys and put it this side. Put all the dollhouse here. Okay. Then he went and took those wooden Jenga blocks. Okay. Put it in the middle. Then on this side, he went and took out all the biggest and most horrible looking uh, animals. So there was a big giant spider, some snakes and all those. Okay. okay. Remember, you have dollhouse furniture, Jenga blocks. Okay. And then you've got uh, all these horrible animals. And then in front of the Jenga blocks facing the animals, he went and put soldiers with guns. Soldiers with guns looking there. Okay. Now, do you think this tray is done by a child who is very happy? Okay. All right. Then do you think it's by a, a child who is very sad? What other feeling then? Uh, is he uh, worried? Frightened? Uh, what makes you think that he's frightened? What do you see? Because they are soldiers, right? And they're pointing at all those animals. Okay, you are right. He was very scared. And he was, he, he was scared of something inside his house or something outside the house. Yes, the Jenga block was like a, a wall. Huh? Okay, what if I will tell you this? Father and mother in the midst of divorce. Father, all right, will come uh, sometimes in the middle of the night, go bang, 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 bang the door. No, I want to kill you and all sort of things. Uh, now, can you understand? With that kind of background, then you understand his trait. And obviously, you also know his feelings. But he didn't know how to say it. You ask him very, chuck up, chuck up, chuck up. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Oh, yes, there's another one. And that one, that thing, I just want to ask you. La, yeah. Like a friend of mine who always worry about his future, la, about negativity and all this. Oh. Even though there is no uh, such a reason. So what is the best technique for him uh, to help him out? 
we always worry about negative future like that. Always worry about the future. Uh, like that type of uh, thinking. Uh. Oh. That, there's one, the, the downward sure. arrow. Oh, okay. Sorry, can I have this back? <laughs> the PowerPoint. Okay, where is my... Oh, here it is. There's, there's one technique we call the downward arrow technique oh, no, we, we do for anxiety. I want to go the other direction. Okay, some more? Stop. Okay. This is the downward arrow technique. Okay, so your friend. Uh, okay. So what if, all right, I lose my job? So he, he's worried about his future. Yeah. So, so you keep on going down. Say, okay, so what, what, what are you worried about? about? He said, I may lose my job, right? Then you ask him the question, so what if you lose your job? What, what is so bad about that? Then, then he will tell you, oh, I, I won't have money to eat. Okay, so, so what if you don't have money to eat? So you keep on going down now. Yeah? Keep on going down and ask, okay, so, so what? So what's so bad about that? So what's so bad about In the that? end is, what is the worst that can happen? Yeah. So this is one, one technique we use. Lah. But, but if, if it's still difficult, then, then you better ask him to see a counsellor. <laughs> this one actually, you are helping that person to really think, you know. Go on, go on, go on. A lot of people are, oh, if I lose my job, I die. Or... You, you, correct or not? They'll say things like that. This one actually will help you pin it down. Okay? And then after that, okay, from zero to a hundred, uh, what is the likelihood you will lose your job? I think, in fact, in Penang, uh, we don't have enough workers. Uh. <laughs> okay? So it's different. But these people are like, uh, what happens is that their brain is wired to all the negative ones. Okay? And you see, they're like this. Oh, look, it's raining. Yes. Then my, I don't have to water my plants. The other one, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to storm. Then there'll be a flood. And then I cannot go to work. Some people are like, <laughs> have you seen those? Ah, oh, very, they can make any, they can make you sad. At any time, one very tense. Okay, so some of them, okay, some of these people, um, you can act, um, okay, cognitive behavior therapy recognizes there are like 12 different types of negative thinking, okay, and actually, for each type, there is a way to overcome it, all right, this cognitive behavior th uh, therapy. Uh, negative thinking. So, if you want, you have to either come and see Dr. Lai and I or ask uh, Kiwanis to organize another one. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Lai and Dr. Indrani. So, any more questions? None. Nah. Oh, you have one more? Uh, nothing. Nothing. One more question. This technique, right? Um, so, Sometimes in our help hotline, right, we get uh, callers who are overthinking or they look yeah. and then we want to use this type of technique on them. But you can sense that they are not interested in improving and they just want to repeat what they are experiencing. So is it okay just to you know listen to them and not practice this on them? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I think hotline sometimes people are lonely. They, they want someone to talk to them. Sarah, sir, yes. we friend this, sir. Do they, uh, do you use the, the CBTs, uh, 12 different negative thinkings, negative, what, uh, negative distortion? Uh, it depends on the individual. So, negative, I remember now, it's negative distortions. That's the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, terminology or negative thinking. All right. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Atin Indrani and Dato Jalai. Okay, so I hope you have learned a lot, right? You have learned the downward arrow trend, butterfly, what kind of butterfly tap, and so forth. So I hope you find this wealthy. Okay, uh, in appreciation of uh, Dato Lai and Dato Indrani, I'd like to invite uh, the President, Ng Lan Keng, to give them a, a memento.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, again, let's give uh, Dato and Dato and Dati. Okay, uh, just a okay, just an announcement, right? We have the D Home Mental Health Association booth there. If you have any questions. You know, you want to ask about some mental problem, you can go to the uh, uh, baby is here, baby is from, she's from the D home. If you have any questions, you can go to the booth outside there. Okay. Uh, anything else? No more already, yeah? Yeah, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, hello everyone. Yeah, I'm from the Home Mental Health Association. Uh, in fact, we have care line from 10 to 2, Monday to Saturday. So you can call up, it's anyway, it's free service. And then if there's need help, uh, our care line will be able to arrange you to see our counsellor or even our clinical psychologist. This service is provided free. Yeah, ah, thank you. Okay, uh, please remember to fill in our QR code, just scan the thing because we want to do an improvement. And then stay tuned for our next uh, mental health thing. We have a Dr. Ravana who's coming to talk about coping with uh, coping with mental mental health thing. Okay, Dr. Ravana. Okay, so stay tuned. For those of you who have registered, your email address is with us. We already compiled it and we will forward to you our next uh, notification, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we will send you the, the PDF thing, okay? So thank you so much. Please help yourself to the refreshment, right? Get yourself acquainted. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.